Hello everyone, today is Thursday, November 5th, 2020 at uh, 1.52 a.m. Sorry about that, I was trying to check the time. And then, um, I, I, my accidentally turned on a magnifier. But anyway, um, I was actually, I mean, I was, you know, trying to scroll down and look at the time and I asked the magnifier accidentally came on but um so I didn't realize I got cut off yesterday when I was trying to talk about um you know at the Feg's mental health place in New York how they um me having a fresh college degree a bachelor's degree and then the first thing they want they think it's real therapy to force us to do mental health services I mean, uh, they make it is is good mental health therapy to um go and um you know do be forced to do nothing but math, first grade math games to play on a computer, and then when there was talk therapy, everyone was allowed to talk except me, but then um hold on, excuse me, everybody was allowed to talk except me. And then if I did talk and try to talk about my problems, I got ridiculed and I was forced to shut up. But then every no everybody acted nervous and nobody else wanted to talk about their problems. And that would happen in other mental health group therapy sessions too. I guess they were all perps who really didn't have any problems. But nobody wanted to talk about their problems. You know, and this was long before I found out I was gang years before I found out I was gang stalked. And nobody wanted to talk about their problems. Or maybe they had nothing to talk about. And they just, you know, fake nervous, fake smiling all around, you know. And then I'm the only one who's eager to talk about my problems and what I'm going through. And I wait until anybody else wants to talk. Nobody wants to talk. So that's when I, you know, try to talk about my problems. Nobody wants to hear it and stuff. So I'm like, well, I'm not allowed to talk in this group therapy. Nobody else wants to talk. And I got a baggage of problems. I didn't know what the hell was going on. So the, all those people who were fake quiet and stuff, they were perps. But So there's supposed to be a therapy session where everybody's just sitting there looking stupid for a whole hour and nobody's, you know, talking or whatever. That I, I kind of find out, realized that that's stage two. So that's the rest of what I wanted to say in the other video that, you know, got cut off. And then I kind of found out... <coughs> um. My my phone went back to um like well this is the first time this phone did that but before um the other phone you know would have it seemed like it's taking up extra space like I was only able to like yesterday afternoon afternoon I was able to do or yesterday evening I was only able to do um like less than seventeen minutes of a video and then next thing you know it it cut off so. I just previously uploaded that video, the previous video, and then um, it, the one that's entitled Good News, Bad News, Targeted Individuals or whatever. So um, I used the last little bit of my personal, I mean, the video, t I, use, I used my personal data to upload, to, um, finish uploading like the last 10 minutes, which turned out once I put my, my phone data on, it seemed like 10 seconds, so, from other than 10 minutes, so, um, so, I looked, in the photos, it looked like it was, I mean, if I deleted everything and sent, you know, sent everything to trash, and I deleted everything, why is there so much storage space, and so, I know that, um, they've been digging in my phone, like, digging and hacking into my phone and stuff, doing weird stuff like you would think it's a um nine month old baby playing on the phone and y'all some grown ass adults and doing this remotely to my phone and stuff you know so um like the day before yesterday you know I had just paid my bill that day and it's not like they were couldn't stop fucking with my phone um and I had it in my pocket and it's like a whole bunch of different random buttons were pressed and I don't use airplane mode and I don't use Bluetooth. I don't have a Bluetooth device, so I have no reason. And I never use Bluetooth, never in my life, ever. 
So, um, anyway, so let me tell y'all, I have to tell y'all about this nightmare that I, that I had. Um, so yesterday was Danielle from the Kraft family's, um, it was her birthday. She would, if she would have been alive, she would have been 39 years old. I think. Yeah. And I remember that. Okay. So, um that her birthday was November 4th and, um, she died last, last year, like last June 8th, 2019 of stomach cancer at 37 years old. And now me and my twin sister, we're 37. So, um, it was, you, you know, um, I don't remember if it was before midnight or after midnight that I had this nightmare. Um, and it's like, I can't, I feel like I was tired, but I can't go back to sleep. And so I feel like I had to come and jump on this video and talk about it. And so, um, so in the dream, I don't remember if it was, um, just chili from T the music group TLC or T Boz and Chili both, but it was definitely Chili was one of them, and I think T Boz was in a dream. I don't remember, and I'm like I don't even like Chili. She was rude to me on Twitter, um, and and had me wrongfully and unfairly blocked on Facebook for no reason, um, like she added me as a, a she blocked me and then added me as a friend and then blocked me again, um back in 2010 so and then she was like on twitter she was she was rude to me said a rude comment to me on twitter so it's like i don't i mean i was disappointed because i'm supposed to be like you, you know at the time i was a diehard fan you know almost as much of a diehard fan of tlc as i was of Aaliyah. so chili um in real life in 2010 she you know she had she was you know rude to me on twitter and blocked me on facebook or whatever and she acted like stuck up and self righteous narcissistic abuser and act like she delusionally believes she's better than perfect. So um anyway, so I don't like chilling, so I'm like, what the hell? Like she's in my dream and being nice to me in the dream. And I even confronted her to her face in the dream. I said, Chili, you were all mean and stuff, you know, treat me all mean and, and, and on Twitter and stuff, and now you're so nice to me. Like, why are you being nice to me? In the dream, I said that. So, um, then after that, um, in, in, in a dream, it's like, lately I've been having a lot of freaking dreams and nightmares about being at the foster mom's house. That foster mom, Adrian Felder, who they call Ann. So, anyway, um, we were in the upstairs living room, well, well the, the, the den, you know, that that other people would call it a living room, but they call it the den. So we were in the upstairs den next to the kitchen. <clears throat> and then in the dream, the biological gay brother Mark and the biological sister Ramona were in the dream. And then in the dream, um, like, and I think my twin sister could have been in the dream. I don't remember. But I'm disturbed and creeped out that, um... So, in the dream, uh, like, Mark was already there, and I think he was talking to Chili and having a conversation with her or whatever. And then the biological sister, Ramona, had came. And I think my twin, I don't remember if my twin sister was in the dream or not, but the biological sister, Ramona, was in the, she came and showed up. And next thing you know, she started smacking her food on fried chicken, and I hurry up. And, and and ran into a, um my what was my childhood bedroom, you know, in the bedroom that was used when I um like when I stayed with the foster mom after Hurricane Katrina, um that bedroom, and um then Freddie Jr. from the Crab family. When I thought Ramona came to follow me and chase me to my bedroom, I'm like, oh, shit, please, please don't come up in here with smacking your food or whatever. And so then I, Freddie Jr. came in, in the room 
And then he went and just um plopped down on the um he went and just plopped down on the uh on my bed and then he woke up and and then he was transformed to John Craft, his brother. So um in, in the dream, John was trying to tell me that one of his children died. And I said, well, which, which one of them was it? I said, was it Raj? What, like, was it John, John Trail? Was it Colin? Who was it? So then he was trying to get me to guess. And then he turned around and said in the dream, he said it was Colin, the youngest one who died in the dream. And, which, and so then I freaked out. And then I walked into the kitchen. And then this, I'm sorry to creep y'all out, but this happened in the nightmare, the bad dream. And then in, in, in a dream, you know, John Craft was the one who was, my twin sister told me that the foster mom had, um, you know, said that the biological sister Ramona was the mystery woman that her husband, the biological dad, Al, and John Craft family, I mean, I mean John Craft from the Craft family, and the foster dad, L, with, you know, doing like threesomes with Ramona or taking turns on Ramona and stuff. Or with my biological sister, Ramona, and John Craft and Ramona, they both deny that. So, if the foster mom, you know, she said that that was the mis that my biological sister, Ramona, was the mystery woman that the foster dad, Al, and, um, and that her and the foster dad, Al, used to argue over every morning. And so then, um, I was creeped out in the dream that, you know, a nightmare that um, John Craft, you know, and I know in real life, it seemed like he never acted like as if, you know, Ill, like we, he would never want us like he thought, it, you know, he was too good, to, you know, but I'm glad that's a good thing, you know. So in the nightmare, he had his freaking um, like, like as if his penis was pressed, like right on my butt cheek, and I was, like, grossed out, you know, like, after he told me the so-called news, and then after that, um, and Ramona was sitting right there in the dream, and, and didn't say anything, and so then, um, I don't remember what other events happened in the dream, but, you know, I woke up feeling, like, very disturbed, and feeling uneasy, and couldn't go back to sleep, and and then I lingered a while and tried to go back to sleep. And I was very sleepy and still tired. But I felt like I could not go back to sleep until after I talked about this freaking nightmare, this dream that I had. You, you know, sometimes, like, n nightmares or dreams that seem realistic, that seem real, seem like sometimes I have to just freaking let it out and get off my chest before I forget. You know, and I, I think that's everything that happened in a dream. I don't remember what other stuff happened in a dream. But then, um, you know, I'm, I'm suspicious that Danielle's death was a blood sacrifice. I mean, I could be wrong, but I really think if, the, if that there must, the Kraft family is a Masonic family. Oh, another thing. Um, in a dream, um... John was telling Mark and Ramona about, you know, Mr. Freddie, he passed away in like in 2006. Um, two days after our birthday. And, well, I found out he shares the dog on the same birthday as the, the singer Aaliyah. But, of course, he's way much older. And then she died on our birthday when we turned 18. And then for our on our 23rd birthday, um, two days after I w like, I was in, just got to New York, but by, by on, like the, like I arrived in New York, like the, the night before our birthday. And, and then, uh, two days later, I heard that, you know, when I found out Mr. Freddie had died two days later. So, um, like, and like Freddie Jr., his, like, his wife's obituary had, like, she had, like, uh, like I think a part in her head, and she had, like, b black and red hair, and her left eye was covered. And I'm like, oh, no, like, so, so much freaking, 
you know, sacrifice or whatever, you know, but why would this lady wear black and red and her left eye is covered, not with her hand, but with, with, with the, with the hair. Cause it looked like she had on a short wig, you know, and then not long ago, I was so happened to see that Freddie Jr. had like a little Twitter, you know, talking about help me bury my wife. And he had like a GoFundMe and I saw the picture of that wife or whatever. And, and he was, you know, talking about being off, you know, getting freaky or whatever. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought this man was a strong Christian. I, oh, I thought he told me he was a Christian or whatever, you, you know. So when I saw Freddie Jr. and John Kraft at the um, food bank in uh, 2018, it's like John was acting rude towards his own brother at the food bank, and I'm sitting there wondering, like, it ain't my business, but, you know, I just so happened to see both of them, and I'm like, damn, if they're Masonic and rich, why the hell they need to go to food banks and stuff, you know, but, I mean, their family is freaking rich, and so, you know, these people are related to Lanika from the Kraft family, who, you know, that witch, that witch whore, you know, who I ended up you know, it seemed like as if active gang stalking and targeting started to happen because of her. And I'm going to bring it up again. So, um, yeah, they were re related to Stank Horlanika. And so, um, I don't care. I'm freaking, you know. So, anyway, back to the dream. I forgot to say that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I forgot to say that in the dream, Mr. Freddy... Um, it's like John was telling Mark and Ramona about this address to, you know, if Mr. Freddie's deceased, but they were, but John was talking, talking about, you know, here's the address to my dad talking about Mr. Freddie, Mr. Freddie's new house. And I'm thinking like, how the hell Mr. Freddie has a new house and he's dead, you know? So in a dream, I was thinking that, you know, I like, talking about Mr. Freddie's new house, but it was a while back, um, I don't remember if it was earlier this year, I think it was, I had a weird dream or a nightmare or whatever, that um, Miss Ollie and Mr. Freddie were still alive, I think, and they moved out of that house and then moved somewhere else, but Mr. Freddie and Miss Ollie stayed in that house until they died, you know, and it was the big talk of the town about how their house stank, and I would talk about their multi-generational foul odor and stuff like that, um, you know, because you'll go to Miss Cheryl's house, Monica's mom, and her house smells bad, too, and her car stinks, and it's very dirty, and stuff like that, um, she, like, in 2018, she offered me a ride a couple of times, but you're driving around in a dirty car, but you act like you, like, I'm too good to ride, I mean, like, I mean, you acting like you're too good to, um, you know, dri drive me in your dirty car. But then it's like, I didn't know all this. You know, I had speculations, but I didn't know or have my final confirmation of, you know, everything that was going on. But I've been bothered for years, you know, bothered for years about Lanika and the situation that happened. <laughs> Excuse me. So, you know, back then, um, I was like... 12 and 13 years old and people acting like everything seemed promising for me. Like they knew I was going to succeed. And then after that situation happened, you know, everybody started to call me crazy and started to try to doubt all my dreams and try to shut down everything I wish for and dream for, you know? So I didn't realize I unintentionally exposed something, you know, masonic or whatever you know and i didn't know it. i knew nothing about freemasonry or any anything like that so um this dream i didn't get to talk about this new this dream not new dream but it's a dream that i had i don't remember as whether it was within um the last month since i got here or if it was before i got here and i was still sleeping i was or did i sleep on the streets last night or I mean, I mean, what, what is wrong with me? Did I sleep on the streets that night, or if I slept on the, um, if I was already in this hotel room? But I had a, and I don't think I got to talk about it on YouTube. But I had a um dream or nightmare that um it was a nightmare 
that I was at the foster mom's house and um, I was outside during the day and they had a school bus that was portrayed as my childhood elementary school bus 329, a bus portrayed as that. And I got on the bus um, and the bus was parked like where the foster dad Al would have his truck, that big delivery truck. And it was parked backwards. Um, so then, um, for some reason I was sitting outside and then I got, um, I got on the, um, bus and went to lay down during the day and try to fall asleep. And then next thing you know, I went some kind of way, found myself in my bedroom in a dream, in my child, that childhood bedroom. That was the same bedroom. Um, it's that big room in, in the, the first big one in, in, the, in the big room in the hallway. So, um, like that's not far from the other hallway because they had two hallways that were not exactly parallel, but, you know, kind of parallel, um, more like adjacent or something like that. So, um, and it was not, I guess you could say it was around the corner from that upstairs den. So, um, in that, that big room, um, I was sitting in the room and then outside, um, I looked outside and, um, I think I remember seeing a whole bunch of blue, blue cars or a whole bunch of red, red cars or some blue cars and red cars or something. And in the dream, it was, um, what was that? In New Orleans, when, um, I guess even when people weren't, when people don't die, there's a freaking second line or whatever. I, and I heard that some there's something satanic and occultic behind second lines too. But and, and I never want to participate in them. You know, even Ramona with a deceitful looking smile on her face when when my cousin Blake died, she, you know, oh Candy, you you want to participate in the second line? I'm like, no, you know. So, um, so with the second, they had a second line in a. A whole bunch of people, and I think it was a big funeral, and like it was a whole bunch of blue cars and red cars. And then another time, um, I was I know I was sleeping on the streets this night. I think it was last month or the month before, and I woke up feeling disturbed because there was a nightmare that somebody in the foster family had died, but nobody wanted to tell me who it was. But it wasn't the foster mom. But um, it was like really, and I don't remember all the details. But um, I was creeped out and freaked out, you know, um, that, you know, some in the dream, nobody wants to tell me who it was, who, who somebody in the foster family had died or whatever. And so um, then... I remember, you, you know, I don't know, it's just some scary stuff. Um, because I remember with my biological cousin, Blake, when Blake, um, like before Blake died, you know, I did it on my other channel before it got deleted. I did video analyzing, you know, the, the signs that I had in my life before Blake died. Oh man, I don't want to break down and start crying, you, you know, um, so, I think I'm going to end this video right now. But, you know, I don't mean to creep nobody out or, or offend anybody. But, um, you know, I, me telling these, like, creepy, frightening nightmares and stuff like that. Um, you know, like, it, it was so close to Danielle's posthumous birthday. You, you know, we grew up with these people, the Kraft family. You know, they live, the family lived right across the street from the foster mom. So, and me having, I don't, I mean, I'm trying to figure out, you know, I, I don't know, you know. So, I woke up, you know, feeling disturbed and, you know, had to tell this freaking I don't even know, if, excuse me, I don't know even know if it's this, this, this dream thing is like... <laughs> Excuse me, a freaking spiritual thing. But why the hell would they come mess with me in a in a, in a dream? You know. So I'm gonna go now and bye bye.